Number 10. The USS Independence The USS Independence was an aircraft carrier that served in the Pacific Ocean during the early 1940s. While World War II raged all over the globe, it was a vital base for many fighter planes employed by the U.S. military. The USS Independence survived the war in one piece, but met its final fate a few years later. It wasn't destroyed in conflict, though. Instead, the massive ship was given a different assignment. It was involved in the atomic bomb tests in Bikini Atoll. The Independence ended up being used as a target for nuclear blasts so that scientists and military officials could learn more about the devastating effects of atomic bombs. Photos of the ship from that time show it battered and buckled by a deadly combination of shockwaves, heat, and radiation, which slowly chipped away at her as she performed her valiant role as a guinea pig for the nation she once defended. There's only so much a ship can take when faced with detonation after detonation. Noticing the rate at which the USS Independence was falling apart, officials made the decision to scuttle her, deliberately sinking her off the Farallon Islands. Surveys of the area 64 years later revealed the final resting place of the warship. The ship is in surprisingly good condition, resting slightly on her side at 2,600 feet below the surface, and still in one piece despite the damage she sustained. However, no attempts will be made to rescue her. Instead of the fighter planes she was used to carrying, she was loaded with radioactive waste material from the tests. Number 9. The Basilic In the medieval world, the city of Constantinople stood tall. Considered the doorway to Europe, it was an impenetrable fortress with layers of thick walls and a well-defended coastline. Many rulers wanted to conquer it, but they all failed. However, one man was so hellbent on taking the famous city that he commissioned the building of the largest cannon ever seen, the Basilic. The man's name was Sultan Mehmed II, who went on to become one of the greatest rulers in the entire history of the Ottoman Empire. The Basilic was built by the famous gunsmith Urban and was an absolute monster of a weapon. It measured 27 feet in length and could house a 1,200-pound stone cannonball in its 30-inch diameter chamber. It was crafted out of bronze that was 8 inches thick and weighed a massive 40,000 pounds, which meant that it needed countless oxen in order to haul it into position. When the Basilic was fired, the sound thundered over a distance of 10 miles, and that 1,200-pound cannonball we spoke of could be propelled over a mile. Battlefields could be noisy places, but Basilic made it literally deafening. For the people of Constantinople in 1453, it would have been a terrifying thing to behold due to a combination of its size, sound, and destructive power. However, medieval cannons did have their drawbacks, and Basilic was no exception. It would take hours in order to set it up to be able to fire, with agonizing relocating, aiming, and loading needing to take place for every shot, and early cannons were far from reliable. Despite being secured in mud in order to absorb most of the enormous recoil generated by it, the bronze metal of the Basilic began to show signs that it was cracking quite soon after beginning to fire. Eventually, the damage took its toll, and like many other cannons of the time, it exploded, causing damage to the Ottoman troops and rendering it completely useless. However, it is thanks to artillery like the Basilic that Sultan Mehmed II was able to take Constantinople and change the game when it came to siege warfare in the Western world. Number 8. The Paris Gun You may have heard about Big Bertha, the German howitzer of World War I that struck fear into many of the Allied forces. However, you'd be more unlikely to know about the Paris Gun, and there's a good reason why it's faded into the history books. The Paris gun was a strange contraption with a metal base at one end into which stairs were installed so that artillerymen could get to the barrel of the beast and operate it. At the other end was a massive tubular chamber measuring 69 feet long, supported by metal struts and scaffold similar to that used on steel bridges. Construction of the gun was completed in early 1918 and it was used between March and August of that same year. But why was it so huge? The answer to that partly lies in its name of the Paris gun. Thanks to its unique design, it was able to propel large 233-pound shells over a distance of 74 miles, allowing the Germans to rain destruction on the city of Paris from far away in the forest of Saint-Gobain. However, its massive range had its setbacks. Despite being able to fire around every 15 minutes, the accuracy of the shots wasn't great. As a result, over the entire period in which the Paris gun was shelling the city it was named after, only 256 people were killed, with 620 being injured. This remarkable feat of engineering was ultimately pretty useless. The only records we have of the Paris gun come from photographs taken from the time. When the tides of the war started to turn and the German forces realized they were on the brink of defeat, they destroyed it to save it from falling into enemy hands. Number 7. The V3 Cannon During World War II, Hitler commissioned the development of revenge weapons or Vergeltungswaffen. 
The first two of these, called V1 and V2, had been responsible for causing destruction and terror across England. They were pilotless missiles, and the V2 was even capable of breaking the sound barrier. V3 was a little bit different, and in fact is much more like the Paris gun already featured on this list. In fact, the Paris gun was where the inspiration for this war machine came from. Also known as Project High Pressure Pump, construction and planning began in August of 1942. The man at the head of the project was August Coindes, a machine gun engineer who had been inspired by the French documents on the Paris gun and their attempts to create a counterweapon. The aim was to create 50 of these guns in an underground bunker just outside the small French village of Mimoyec. The intention was that they would be able to fire a round every five minutes, meaning that 600 shells would come plummeting down on the city of London each and every hour of the day. It's truly a frightening thing to think about given the fact that the city was also being heavily bombed by planes and zeppelins at the time. However, V3 was destroyed before it could fire a single shell. The Germans didn't do a good job of hiding the encampment where the weapon was as they left out hay bales to disguise the gun turrets. This would have worked great at first, but as the local farmers started to bring in their bales, it looked mightily suspicious to the Allied troops, with the RAF's Lancaster bombers eventually destroying the site with the specially designed Tall Boy Bomb. Number 6. The Surcouf Surcouf was a French vessel that was completed in 1935. She was the world's biggest submerged submarine weighing 3,404 tons with a length of 350 feet and a beam of more than 29 feet. She could also travel around the world with ease. Surcouf had a range of 10,000 nautical miles and a crew of 120 men. She wasn't lacking firepower either with a twin turret containing 8-inch guns. Surcouf even had a waterproof hangar on it from which a seaplane could be launched for reconnaissance. Among other tricks up her sleeve was a 16-foot-long motorboat and a prison capable of housing 50 inmates. When World War II started, many questioned the loyalty of the crew of the Surcouf, but she was given refuge in the UK port of Plymouth, along with the men who decided to stay with her and fight in the Free French Army. Eventually, she was sent out on patrol around the Atlantic and Pacific. However, thanks to her unreliability and some of the questionable decisions of her crew, such as seeming to attack an Allied merchant ship, the Surcouf was described as being of no operational value and is little short of a menace by a British admiral. The Surcouf made her final voyage from the port of Bermuda on the 12th of February 1942. However, she was never seen again. Was she a victim of enemy ships or the Bermuda Triangle itself? Let us know what you think happened to the Surcouf in the comments below and hit subscribe while you're at it. Number 5. The XB-70 Valkyrie The XB-70 Valkyrie was the quickest and the largest bomber ever developed by the U.S. Unfortunately, the gigantic 6-engine Mach 3 capable plane was never fully commissioned. They did, however, build two prototypes. The theory was that if the planes could fly high enough and fast enough, they would be unable to be stopped by anti-aircraft missiles and enemy fighter planes so they could complete their objective unharmed. Development started in the 1950s, and by 1964, the two planes were completed. They measured 185 feet in length and had a wingspan of 105 feet and could fly at over 2,000 miles per hour. Sadly, just two years later, in 1966, one of the prototypes was involved in a mid-air collision with its escort plane while in the middle of testing. Two pilots died as a result, and another was seriously injured in the crash. The XB-70 was completely destroyed. The project was scrapped in 1969, and the surviving prototype now makes its home in a museum in Dayton, Ohio. Number 4. The Moxva The Moxva was seen as the Russian flagship of the Black Sea. The guided missile cruiser was initially known as the Slava when she was initially built in 1976. She measured 611 feet in length, weighing over 9,000 tons and carrying a crew of over 400 men. It was deployed in many missions, but its most notable and last mission was in 2022 when it was used in the war against Ukraine. During this conflict, it was struck with anti-ship missiles by Ukrainian forces working in tandem with their allies and was sunk. It's unknown how many people died on board. There's been much debate on whether the Moxva was actually gunned down by enemy forces. Russian state media and the defense ministry instead claimed that the ship suffered a fire on board, which caused ammunition to explode and cause it to sink beneath the waves. Others see this as a sign that the country wished to keep its losses a secret so as not to panic its countrymen and women. The sinking of the Moxva makes it the largest warship to sink in over 40 years. The last one, the ARA Belgrano, sank during the 1982 Falklands War. Number 3. The Panzer VIII Mouse The word mouse means mouse in English. However, this next war machine is far from small and is in fact the heaviest tank ever made. 
The brainchild of Ferdinand Porsche, the founder of the Porsche car brand at the command of Hitler, the mouse tank weighed in at over 180 tons. To put this into perspective, a modern M1A1 Abrams MBT tank weighs only 67 tons, and another tank at the time, the Tiger I, weighed only 50 tons. This was in part due to the fact that its armor was up to 9 inches thick. No wonder it had a max speed of 10 miles per hour. Of course, mobility was an issue, especially when it came to crossing bridges. Mouse would simply be too heavy for them. So the logical conclusion of the German engineers was that instead of going over bridges, it would go under them and was designed to be able to drive underwater. Just before it was able to be brought into production, the factory in Essen charged with manufacturing these colossal tanks was bombed and destroyed by Allied bombers. This meant there were only two prototypes left of the tank, one of which was blown up by the Germans themselves to stop it from falling into enemy hands, and the other captured by Russian forces. Funnily enough, the Russians found the tank to be completely useless. And so the last surviving mouse tank sits in the Kubinka Tank Museum to this day. Number 2. Warwolf Warwolf was a trebuchet, a wooden contraption designed to fling materials and projectiles with speed and force, and a popular choice of weapon for medieval sieges. Warwolf puts all other trebuchets to shame. The English and the Scots had been consistently fighting on and off for a number of centuries by the time our story begins in 1304. And in fact, they would continue for many years to come. King Edward I of England was doing particularly well in his war with Scotland, and their defense had been sapped down to just one fortress left standing, Stirling Castle. And Edward has the perfect weapon. Warwolf was the trebuchet of all trebuchets. It measured in at over 300 feet tall when fully extended and was able to hurl stones weighing over 300 pounds. It had to be carried in over 30 wagons and had a force so powerful that Edward even ordered the lead stripped from nearby churches in order to make counterweights for it. Initially, Stirling Castle refused to surrender. However, after three long months of watching Warwolf being assembled right outside their gates, they started to feel rightfully nervous. We can only imagine what must have been going through their minds as it started to take shape. When it became obvious just what sort of monster Edward had created, the garrison tried to surrender. But Edward was having none of it. He was going to have a bit of fun with his new toys. The castle walls and gates were obliterated within a few throws. The original war wolf has been lost to time, likely because it was too cumbersome to take around everywhere. However, a replica can be seen outside nearby Kerlavrock Castle. Number 1. The Helepolis the year is 305 BC. Demetrius I of Macedonia has been sent by his father, King Antigonus, to besiege the island city of Rhodes, located just off the Greek mainland. Demetrius's eventually doomed campaign led to the creation of one of the most bizarre war machines ever created, and one of the largest. Named Helepolis, or Taker of Cities, it was the largest siege tower that the world had ever seen. It was a staggering 130 feet tall and 65 feet wide. Primarily made of wood, it was reinforced with iron plating that was lined with animal skins and wool to make it fireproof, with shutters at the front which could be opened for the Macedonians to fight from. Sounding more like an apartment building than a weapon of war, it had nine floors and could house hundreds of men who would operate the cannons and ballistae that were stationed inside. But something so huge was not without its flaws. The 160-ton tower took 3,400 men to move into position, working in shifts due to the heavy exertion it took to move the thing. The people of Rhodes were not going to let Demetrius and his behemoth of a structure intimidate them. They savagely attacked back, ripping away the iron plating to expose the vulnerable wood underneath, and even soaked the ground underneath it so that the Helepolis became mired in the mud. Sensing that the battle was not going to go in his favor, Demetrius and the Macedonians retreated, leaving much of the equipment and their siege weapons behind. The Helepolis was inevitably destroyed. However, there's a very famous testament to its legacy. The Rhodians were able to gain a lot of wealth from scrapping, melting down, and selling many of the leftovers from Demetrius's failed campaign, including Helepolis. Using the funds and raw materials, they built the Colossus of Rhodes, a huge statue straddling either side of the port in honor of the sun god Helios. Sadly, this also fell to ruin as the result of an earthquake, but it lives on as the inspiration for the Statue of Liberty and the Titan Statue of Bravos in the series Game of Thrones. Thanks for watching. Do you know of any other war machines that shared a similar fate to those on our list? Tell us about it in the comments below and don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Thanks again and we'll see you next time for another amazing video right here on American Eye.